Hi, so good morning. Welcome to the again to this another series lecture about electrical wiring simulator or EWS. Today we are going to perform the six activity under the magnetic contactor circuits. Okay, so let's click this one. Okay, and then let's proceed to activity number six. So the title of this activity will be the interlocking circuits. Okay, so let's click this one. So in this circuit, we are going to discuss how to implement the interlocking circuit in a magnetic contactor system okay so let's click the normal mode okay and then uh, okay so before we start this one so it's uh noticeable that in this particular activity we will be having two magnetic contactors we have the km1 and then the km2 here okay so let's discuss first the functionality of this uh, km of this uh, circuit interlocking circuit first okay so but before that okay the PB2, let's assume that this PB2, the, the purpose of the PB2 is to energize this KM1, and then the purpose of this PB3 is to energize this KM2. Hence, if we press this PB2 here, this one will turn on. Okay? However, if this one is already turned on, no matter how we press this PB3 here, this P KM2 should not turn on. Okay? It will only turn on if we release our finger from this PB2. Okay, so let's assume that we release the PB2 here, the finger of our PB2. Now let's press the PB3. If we press the PB3, this KM2 should turn on. Okay, so no matter how you press this PB2 here, if your finger is still in the PB3, no matter how you press this PB2, this KM1 should not turn on. Okay, so in short, if... There, there is already a contactor which is turned on. The other contactors should not turn on, okay? You have to make this contactor de-energize first before you can energize another contactor. So this, this is very important, especially if we will discuss the forward-reverse motor control circuit uh, later on, okay, in the next activity. So to implement this one, we have to discuss this uh, circuit here. Okay, so to implement the interlocking circuit, we will be using this normally closed contact. So take note in the holding contact, we can use the normally open contact of the, the same contactor. Okay, for example, KM1. So our holding contact for this PB2 should also be KM1 normally open. Okay, however, in the interlock, we will be using the uh, normally closed contact of the other contactor okay so in this particular case here this km2 which is connected in series with the km1 contactor is an interlocking contact okay at the same time this km1 here which is connected in series with the km2 coil is an interlocking contact okay so these are these two here serves as our interlocking circuit okay or components Okay, so how uh, will they be able to function as an interlock? Okay, so take note, guys. If you press this one here, okay, and your finger will uh, hold it for a couple of seconds, okay, so press and hold. So the current will now be able to flow through this line here. Hence, this KM1 will energize. Okay, if this one is energized, take note, this one is also KM1. It means that it is the same contactor. Okay, KM2 and KM2 here means that these two here belongs to a single contactor. So KM1, activate or energize when you press and hold, energize. So if this one is energized, the current, uh, if this one is energized, this KM1 here will now open. Okay, will now open. So this is closed, so will now open. So if this is open, okay, no matter how you press this one here, the current will not be able to flow to the KM2 because this line here is open. There is an open line here, okay? So we have to release the our finger here first, okay? You have to release it first before you can press this PB3 and then turn on this KM2, okay? So press this one, turn on the KM2, okay? If this KM2 is already energized, this uh, KM2, which is normally closed here, will open. Okay, so no matter how you press this PB2 here, this KM1 will not activate. Okay, so uh, we have to wire this one first and then let's try to simulate the functionality of the circuit uh, later on. So we have to connect this one, the uh, line 2 first to the, the breaker to the fuse 2, input of the fuse 2. 
okay and then let's connect it the output of our fuse 2 uh, we have to do it a uh, line per line so we have to the output of our fuse 2 to the input of our uh, push button push button number two so the output to the input of our push button number two okay and then the output of our push button number two to the 21 of the km2 take note the km2 so you have to refer this one to the km2 so the output of our pb2 to the 21 of our km2 so this one here is the 21 this one is the 13 so we have to connect it here okay so the output should be connected to the 21 okay next so the 22 of our normally closed contact should be connected to the a1 of our km1 take note the km1 okay so the 22 which is this one connected to the a1 okay so next is the 22 of our km1 should be connected to the uh, fuse one okay should be connected to the fuse one okay and then the fuse one to the breaker okay so next is uh, we have to connect our pb3 so we have two options here you can connect the pb3 the input of our pb3 to the output of our fuse here or we can connect it to the input of our also pb2 so it would be easier if you connect this one to the input of our pb2 okay so the input of our pb1 to the input of our pb2 okay and then the pb3 okay the output of our pb3 to the 21 of our km1 21 of our km1 so this one here to the 21 of our km1 okay so next is the 22 of our km1 to the a1 of our km2 okay so this one here to the a1 of our km2 okay and then the a2 of our km2 which is this portion here can be connected to the output of this fuse one here but the easier way is to connect this one to the a2 of our a1 so a2 a2 okay so a2 we can connect it to the a2 of our km1 okay zoom out okay and then let's press the submit button so pass so we got the 10 wires connected correctly so uh, in this particular case here since we only have one pointer we will not be able to uh, turn on this uh, pb2 here but assure, i assure you that in the next activity we will be able to see the functionality of this interlocking circuit here okay if you press this pb2 okay you should be able to see this uh, km1 here okay however if uh, you are using your finger if you went to try to press this pb uh, 3 here okay while holding this one okay while your finger is still holding this one if you try to press this pb3 you will not be able to activate this km2 here so you really you have to release your hand here first okay and then you can now try to press this pb3 Tuck. so if you press your hand on your P, uh, finger in the pb3 this km2 will already uh, activate hence no matter how you press the pb2 this km1 will not activate okay so release okay so that is the purpose of the interlocking circuits okay so see you in the next lecture